Welcome to the Asthma Interview Series on Lipids and Parental Nutrition. I am Jay Martello, Clinical Practice Specialist for the American Society for Parental and Enter Nutrition and Professor Emeritus at The Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. It is really a thrill for me to be able to interview and moderate uh, the experts in this uh, interview series. We're going to focus on lipids and parental nutrition uh, and with a focus on omega-3 fatty acids lipid use in different patient populations, as well as cost effectiveness of parental nutrition. It's really a thrill for me to be able to uh, discuss lipids with these leading experts in nutrition in the field right now. So our expert today is Dr. Martin Rosenthal, Assistant Professor of Surgery at the uh, uh, College of Medicine at the University of uh, Florida in Gainesville, Florida. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Rosenthal. Really looking forward to hearing your comments about lipid emulsions today. Oh, the pleasure's mine. It's a thrill to be graced by somebody who's uh, been in this field a lot longer than myself. And, uh, you know, I'm thrilled to be here and thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's uh, really looking forward to this. So as we talked earlier, uh, we're going to focus on the chronic critical ill patient population, something I'm very interested in learning more, more about. And so we'll get right into the first question. So with the chronic critical ill patient population, why do you think this patient group would represent a, a, a group that would benefit in particular uh, from the composite lipid emulsions that contain fish oils? Oh, that's a great question. You know, uh, a lot of the literature pertains to a lot of the uh, acute care patient population. And we've seen pretty strongly now that the literature is supporting lipid emulsions with omega-3 fatty acids uh, in deterring and decreasing the amount of inflammation that these patient populations have. Chronic critical illness, unfortunately, doesn't have too much uh, evidence-based literature uh, circulating the use of um, omega-3 fatty acids, especially in parental form, but, you know, it's not too hard to infer or extrapolate data uh, and apply those types of um, inflammatory responses to the chronic critical illness. Uh, one of the hardest things is to get a united definition of even what chronic critical illness is. And currently, most people you say that it's uh, you know, some sort of debilitated state with persistent end organ damage or multi-organ failure, and uh, these patients are hospitalized for an extended period of time. And so if we have good data that supports omega-3 fatty acids to truly decrease inflammation, the idea would be that that would also decrease the amount of catabolism that is uh, uh, endured for these uh, patient population. It's interesting to see that chronic nature that you talk about with the acute inflammatory res response uh, as it kind of waxes and wanes. Um, and you mentioned the anti-inflammatory effect of, uh, of the fish oils. Can you talk a little bit more about what you believe the mechanism of action is of that uh, the anti-inflammatory effect or the pro-resolution property of the fish oils in this regard? Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, an evolving field that is, uh, you know, building a lot of steam currently is how omega-3 fatty acids can be converted to specialized pro-resolving mediators. And these uh, lipid byproducts of the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, EPA and DHA, uh, may actually uh, be the bioactive component of omega-3 fatty acids. These uh, SPMs, as we say, are resolvins, maricins, and protectins, and actually uh, have endogenous uh, bioimpact, if you will, on the nano and picomolar scale. So uh, ultimately, I do think that the omega-3 fatty acids are probably being broken down through endogenous pathways that we have to these SPMs and actually having impact on the pro-resolving mechanisms that we have for the inflammatory cascade. Ultimately, I do think that uh, this has to bore out in the literature, but that's kind of my thought process at this point. That's, that's really interesting. Uh, so what would you say, I mean, we've been I should say, burdened with the traditional soybean oil emulsion for a number of years. What would you think the advantage of the composite lipid emulsion containing fish oils would have, say, to use of the you know, standard soybean oil emulsion in the chronic critical ill? Sure. Well, I mean, for one, uh, there's a component of some of these chronic critical ill folks that go on to progress to what we have coined as persistent inflammatory immunosuppressed catabolic syndrome which typically just means that they have end organ dysfunction 
and they're hospitalized for an extended period of time, greater than 14 days is what we defined it as. And that ultimately gives them this new phenotype, persistent organ failure. What generally drives the catabolism, what I believe drives the catabolism is actually an inflammatory state. They cannot get back to homeostasis. And so we have these lipid emulsions. It's kind of like, uh, you know, everything in moderation. I don't want to just give somebody uh, soybean, which is predominantly an omega-6 fatty acid, a pro-inflammatory diet to somebody who's already inflamed. I'd much rather give them something that is a mixed lipid emulsion that has moderation to it. You know, even in society, uh, we don't make our enterly fed patients drink gallons of soybean. We try and give them a balanced diet. And these lipid emulsions allow us to give that kind of balance to them with the added benefit of having MCT, soybean, olive oil, fish oil, and you know, and some of these uh, fish oil uh, containing uh, intravenous lipid emulsions, we can get enough of the fish oil in lower doses that could actually have an impact in pro-resolution. And so if we can give these mixed lipid emulsions to our highly inflamed chronic critical illness and PICS patients, I don't see why this wouldn't benefit that population. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, again, interesting, and I still find it fascinating. You have the chronic, chronic critical ill patient population as a subset of the critically ill patient population. And, and just, you know, um, uh, a thrill for me to see now that we've got different choices of lipid emulsions in parental nutrition uh, that we can make choices to benefit uh, individual patient populations that we haven't thought of before uh, that can perhaps really impact their clinical outcomes. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, tailored medicine, epigenetics these days, and how we're going to be going about uh, just really giving indiv individualized based medicine as the new horizon. And I think these mixed lipid emulsions and uh, bioadjuncts such as SPMs, I think are going to be the future of how we're going to be feeding some of these critically ill and chronic critically ill and even PICS patients. So I agree 100% with you. Oh, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure talking with you about uh, use of lipid emulsions in the chronic critical ill patient population. Uh, in, in closing, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Rosenthal for his time today, uh, but also want to refer you, if you, have, if you want further information, I refer you to the uh, supplement in February 2020 of JPEN uh, that discusses uh, lipid use in parental nutrition, uh, and that can be found at www.nutritioncare.org. Uh, there's other interviews in this series, so I would uh, uh, suggest that you listen to those as well. I think you'll particularly benefit from seeing the wide variety of different uh, perspectives from the experts in the field that have different experiences, but also the application to different patient populations that we can now make a choice with regards to which lipid emulsion we're going to use. Fantastic. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. 